Hi, I'm Mike from Craft Supplies USA, and today we're going to learn what it takes to successfully stabilize blanks at home. As a turner, I'm always looking for interesting woods to turn. Unfortunately, a lot of woods are too spalted or rotted to turn, and that's where stabilizing comes into play. It's a process that uses vacuum to impregnate the cells of the wood fiber with a heat-cured resin. The resin penetrates deep throughout the wood fibers, creating a hard, dense blank that's nearly impervious to moisture changes and wood movement. Stabilizing wood is a simple four-step process. One, select your material and make sure it's completely dry. Two, submerge the blanks in special resin under a vacuum. Three, release the vacuum and let the blanks soak. Four, cure the resin by baking the blanks. Today I'll explain each step in the process and pass along some tips I've learned after stabilizing thousands of blanks. Let's talk about the supplies you'll need. Stabilizing requires a vacuum pump, a chamber, connecting hoses and valves, stabilizing resin, some dry material, a toaster oven, and a thermometer. Check out the YouTube description for some links to get you started on the products you'll need. Choosing the right wood to stabilize is essential. Dense woods like Cocobolo and Blackwood don't need to be stabilized because they have a high oil content and are naturally dense enough. Species like Maple, Buckeye Burl, Box Elder Burl, Koa, and Walnut are all great candidates for stabilization. There's a ton of other woods out there that would work great as well, but make sure you test a small piece before doing a big batch. Today we'll use some spalted tamarind. Most of this material is too soft to turn without stabilizing, so this will be perfect. This process requires that the blanks be totally dry, less than 6% moisture content. To verify the moisture content, you're going to need a moisture meter. I like the Lignomat Mini Meter. Wet woods won't stabilize, and worse yet, the moisture will be pulled from the blanks into your pump and potentially ruin your pump altogether. If your blanks are above 6% moisture content, you can dry them at home, and I'll show you how to use the toaster oven as a kiln. I recommend getting a dedicated toaster oven for stabilizing. You don't want the resin fumes in the same oven as your food or inside your house. You can usually find them for pretty cheap at your local Walmart or a secondhand store. To kiln dry, simply place the blanks in the oven and turn on the temperature to between 150 and 170 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature gauge on toaster ovens aren't as precise as they need to be, so make sure to use a thermometer like this one placed inside the oven to verify the temperature. It's important that the blanks are dust free and you want to make sure you don't run hotter than 170 degrees or you'll run the risk of starting a fire. For safety's sake, do not leave the wood blanks in the oven unattended and make sure to keep a fire extinguisher close at hand. Now that your blanks are dry, let's set up our vacuum system. I'll start by getting the pump ready. Remove the vent cover and fill the pump with the oil that comes with the pump. Next, I'll add the optional oil vapor filter and adapter. This is a really handy accessory because it catches the fine oil vapor so you don't breathe it in and it doesn't cover your shop floor. Now attach the vacuum line to the pump and the vacuum chamber. Now let's zero the gauge on the chamber. Simply cut the rubber nub on top of the gauge. The manufacturer of the pump requires that you change the oil after every use. Luckily, it's a simple process, just follow the manual that comes with the pump. Before using the system, I always do a quick test to make sure there are no leaks and I'm pulling full vacuum. Fit the lid and make sure it seats properly. Turn on the pump and look at the included gauge. This measures your vacuum in inches of mercury. Your altitude will determine how much vacuum you can pull. At sea level, that number is 29 and a half inches of mercury. 
As a general rule of thumb, you'll lose one inch of mercury for every thousand feet of altitude gained. I'm close to 4,500 feet of elevation, so when I'm pulling 23 to 24 inches of mercury, I know I'm in max vacuum for my elevation. Now that our pump and our chamber are set up, let's talk about resin. This system works with most brands of stabilizing resin, however, do not use Minwax wood hardener, polycryl, or pentacryl in this system because you'll ruin your pump and you could catch it on fire. We carry a couple brands of resin. The most popular brand is cactus juice. This comes with a catalyst you'll need to mix with the resin before stabilizing. We also carry a pre-catalyzed premium resin which requires no mixing and is designed to penetrate as deep as possible. Both cure clear and won't significantly change the color of your wood. Stabilizing resin is also water soluble so it's easy to clean up if you spill some. And both resins work great with cactus juice dyes. Simply mix one two ounce bottle of dye with a gallon of resin. I'll always mix an entire gallon at a time so I don't have to worry about getting the proper ratio of color and dye. And once you mix it, you can store the resin and use it anytime during its one year lifespan. Here are some fun examples of projects I turned using dyed stabilizing resin. The bright vivid colors combined with the natural grain structure create unique patterns and makes boring wood look really good. Now that we're all set up, let's stabilize these blanks. Resin is very expensive, so to save some money, I'll place my blanks in a smaller bucket and set that bucket inside the larger chamber. It's okay if they are touching during this stage. Now we need to add some ballast to weigh the blanks down and keep them from floating. You can use anything that's heavy enough to keep them down. Just make sure what you use is non-porous or it'll soak up the expensive resin. I'll be using this extra faceplate I had lying around the shop. Now place the bucket into the chamber. Pour in the resin and make sure you wear some gloves and eye pro to prevent any splashes from getting in your eyes. Use enough to completely submerge the blanks. Then keep pouring until they are covered by an inch or two of resin. We need to make sure the blanks stay completely submerged throughout the entire process. Open the bleed valve to the fully open position, then turn on the pump. Place the lid onto the chamber and make sure it seats properly. Now we'll slowly close the valve. This will increase the vacuum and you can watch as the air is being pulled from the wood. Make sure you don't close the valve too quickly or the resin will foam up and spill over the sides of the bucket and might get sucked into the pump. Now check your gauge and make sure you're pulling full vacuum and let the pump run for a few hours and then we'll come back later and see if it's still pulling air out of the wood. Okay, we're back. It's been about four hours and the bubbles have pretty much stopped. Now it's time to release the vacuum and shut off the pump. You can see the resin level quickly dropping as it's being pulled into the wood fibers. I'll top off the resin so that the blanks stay completely submerged throughout the entire process. Leave these blanks to soak overnight and we'll check on them in the morning. A good way to check if you had enough resin saturate the blanks is to remove the ballast. If the blanks float, that means you didn't run the pump long enough or let them soak long enough. These blanks don't float, so I know they're good to come out of the chamber and cure. Not all woods will stabilize at the same rate, so make sure you keep checking to see if they float. Now that the blanks have come out of the pot, it's time to cure them. Preheat your toaster oven to 220 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, make sure to use a separate thermometer to verify your temperatures. Remove the blanks from the bucket and shake off the excess resin or wipe them with a paper towel. 
Lay out the blanks on your wire rack and drip pan, making sure they're not touching each other. This will keep the resin from dripping onto the heating element in the oven and keep the blanks from sticking to each other once they're cured. Now you can pour the remaining resin into the original container and keep it for use in your next batch. Once the oven is up to temp, place the blanks in the oven and set a timer for two hours. I'd recommend placing your curing oven outside so that you have proper ventilation as this process puts off a fair amount of fumes. And keeping the oven outside will reduce the risk of fire. Now that we've taken our blanks outside to cure, let's talk for a minute about pump maintenance. You always want to change the oil after every use because it removes moisture buildup and resin buildup inside the pump. You also want to occasionally blow the motor off with an air compressor to keep this thing free of dust. The other thing to make sure of is make sure you stabilize dry material. One time I stabilized wood that wasn't completely dry and all the moisture from the blanks got sucked into the pump and rusted the motor. It took hours to repair and could have easily been prevented. These pumps are well made and are designed for years of use and make a great pump for vacuum chucking. The blanks have been outside curing for two hours and then we let them cool so now it's time to come out of the oven. Some woods may warp slightly during the curing process so don't be concerned. Now that these blanks are ready to turn, let's head to the lathe and make a pizza cutter. The nice thing is stabilized blanks turn and finish just like exotic hardwoods. Use your standard turning tools and finishing techniques. Stabilized wood is perfect for kitchenware that may come in contact with water, and the added weight gives that project a premium feel. And now that you've stabilized the wood, it's nearly impervious to further movement or moisture. A box lid turned from stabilized wood won't move over time, so you'll always have the perfect fit. One benefit of stabilized wood is that it cuts cleaner and takes detail much better. Because they're harder, you can get cleaner lines and sharper transitions. And this process allows you to use blanks that would otherwise be tossed in the fire. Now that the blank is turned, it's time to sand and finish. Use the same sanding materials and finishes that you'd use on any hardwood. Sand the blank at 500 RPM up to 600 grit. Now I'll apply some sanding sealer with a clean rag with the lathe off. Once the blank is completely coated, turn on the lathe to about 500 RPM and buff it in. Now I'll turn up the lathe speed to about 2000 RPM and apply a coat of Dr. Kirk Scratch Free and polish the blank. Stabilized blanks will polish to a higher sheen than non-stabilized blanks because of the resin. Now here's the finished pizza cutter. I love turning stabilized blanks because they're much more durable than regular wood. Stabilizing is a fun process. You can take woods that would normally be thrown away and turn them into unique pieces.
Have fun experimenting with different materials and dyes and take your projects to the next level. If you found the video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more wood turning videos.